Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here. It is the week of October 8th, and we are in the Dreaming City for the Ascendant Challenge. So we're going to be headed all the way back to the top of Ray Sylvia to Harbinger Seclude. If you know where you're going, uh, you can jump ahead. The timestamps will stay on screen for a little while so you guys can know where to look for any of those types of things. I'll do the collectibles like the lore bones and the eggs as well at the end. So use the timestamps if you need them. Otherwise, let's head where this portal is at and I'll show you guys how to get into it. I do want to shout out to all you guys. Thank you all for the support lately. The subs on the channel have been growing, and I appreciate all the support lately. Um, one thing to remember as you guys are doing this one as well, uh, just make sure for this one this week that you do have a weapon that is ranged. That's kind of important. I'll cover it a little bit more than when I get there, but a pulse rifle or a scout is going to be something you're going to want towards the end so you can actually fend off some of those enemies with, with something a little more ranged. It's going to, going to have some good benefits to it. So as we head back here, if a public event is up, it's never a bad thing to actually pick up some ammo. So if you want to do, you know, want to run something different, perhaps maybe a grenade launcher or a machine gun, scout rifle, perhaps come up here. You can go ahead and grab the public event, hit the rally flag. Always nice to time that one. So I usually like to go into the ascendant challenges with a rally flag hit. So we're just running in there with full ammo. Nothing stopping you. It won't reset when you go in. So it's just nice to have. If you can keep your sparrow on this run, it gets a little hairy, but if it doesn't happen, believe me, if this giant ogre's in the way, it makes things really difficult. And I got sniped. That ogre's not quite supposed to be there. He's a little big boy there, and he's just trying to get friendly with me. So we'll try this again. And if there are outtakes, guess what? They'll go in the end. So hopefully I can get by. Big boy. Got to be a little elusive here with the driving, but, you know, it's not my first rodeo back here. But if you can keep your Sparrow, it does make the trip back here a little easier because this is a bit of a long run. Once you come around this, not this corner, sorry. It's not my first rodeo, but apparently it is early still. So when you come around this corner, you're going to have a lot of enemies. If you can keep your Sparrow, it is going to make things a little easier. But again, believe me, if it explodes like mine did, trust me, it's not the first time that's happened. So don't worry if it does or if you just can't drive and you run into walls. That's a thing, too. All the way back here, way in the back. All the way to the very back. So when you get back here, you may have some enemies to take out. So knock them out quickly, and then we will get to the Ascendant Challenge. Hopefully not too many of them spawn. I did this earlier, and enemies just kept spawning. Hopefully I don't. All right, Guardians. So once you're back here staring at the statue, you are in the right place. We're going to go ahead and pop our Tincture of Queen's Foil. If you don't know where to get those, check out. I've got a video for those. I'll put a link to it up top. Activate that one so you can. So a couple reminders as you're heading into this one. Bring something with range. I've got a scout rifle, a sniper, a pulse. Just something you can hit some long-range targets. When you get to the end, you don't want to get booped off by a phalanx. So taking them out early, that would be um, an important thing to make sure you bring with you. So also another thing, a super that you're going to want to bring is going to be one that's going to be powerful for killing enemies or keeping you alive. Now, the enemies that you really have to kill are the knights, and you have to kill those with a sword, but if you're going for a time trial, the quicker you can kill the enemies before that, the better off you're going to be. So a big, giant, void Nova Bomb, maybe Stormcaller or something like that is good. If you want to stay alive and you're just trying to smash the knights, Well of Radiance has its benefits here as well, but make sure you got a Healing Rift that's going to benefit you too. That's just for a Warlock. All classes have their differences. Now, the portal's up there. You're like, how the crap do I get up there? There's a crazy jumping puzzle. You can do that, but honestly, once your Ascendant Tincture has been popped... Turn to your right, you're going to have these invisible portals to go up. This is the easiest way to get up here. So, get your way up these portals. Work your way up. And once you get to the top, we will head inside. Alright, well I died the first time, so we are back. I'll throw that outtake at the end as well. Um, but yeah, just watch your jumps. So when we head inside... Wherever you start from, you got to get to the middle where the big glowing chandelier is at in that giant gazebo. Now, when you get to the middle, you're going to have some enemies that you need to kill if you're going for the time trial. Killing them quickly is important because you still are going to have to smash the knights with the big sword. You're going to have to stay alive while you do that, and then you're going to have to run to the outside. Now, some of those platforms do rotate, so not every platform is made the same. And you're not going to enter this place the same way I do, and you're also not going to exit it the same way I do. So, with regards to um, trying to go for speed, we're going to go for a big giant Nova Bomb, hopefully in the middle. Talk out, knock out quite a few of those guys. Burn down some of these ads. Up on the top, you're going to have some Acolytes up here. 
Submachine guns, I know this is recluse and not everybody has it, but submachine guns are in a really good place right now. They actually feel pretty good. So if you want a submachine gun for clearing ads, it is one that I highly recommend. Now once this opens up, you're going to want to pick up the sword, and you're going to want to look right at Garak. He's the one who's pretty centered between these two. As soon as he stands up and kind of grabs the sword, you can smash and start staggering him. He's the first one that you need to kill. Now there are going to be a lot of enemies that spawn around you. Now when that happens, what you're going to want to do is try and get yourself into some cover. So I usually, once the first one dies, the other two knights are going to be live. Now, at this point, this is a way that you can go for speed. You can just kind of force it down with these two. If you stagger back and forth. It can be a little treacherous. If you have any issues with those, I'll show another one. I've got plenty of videos in different ways to do this. Once the three knights are down, then you can follow the orb, which is going to send you around. So you can see the teleporter. It's probably not even the same way I entered this place, but you also notice there are big flying rocks going around. My advice, if you're curious about this one, for one, enemies are going to spawn, so you can drop the sword and take those out quick, which is actually what I would advise, because those things get to be a little treacherous for trying to pick you off from range. Especially the Vandal Snipers, or the Goblins who want to shield the enemies. And the big thing about, well, hiding enemies are a pain in the butt, but that's a whole different problem, really, entirely. If they're a little too far away, I wouldn't worry as much. But that Phalanx is still over there, so you got to be careful with the Phalanx. Another thing to make note, not every platform is going to stay where you put it. Now, this is a floating platform. Now, he's going to want to knock me off the ledge. So you're, my advice is make sure be careful as you go through these sections. Now, again, floating rocks are one thing to watch for, but so are disappearing platforms. Now, if you feel like you're falling, the sword actually can let you cover some ground pretty well. So be careful. If you are going to have rocks fly by, I almost got smashed literally right there. Make sure the sword is with you the whole time so you can actually open this chest. And then from here, what you can do is jump up to the top and exit. But I'm going to head back to the middle. If you do need any of the collectibles, the lore bones, or anything of that nature, keep the sword with you. There's one I've got to show you that requires this. Watch out for the floating rocks. Those are trouble. Now be careful again about the floating rocks. They can be treacherous, just like this one. I would get wiped out and push to the ground and have to come back in here and do this again. Once you see one of those, though, and if you get a little height, you can actually use this sword to uh, travel pretty well, so that's always fun, too. All right, Guardians, so the one that you need the sword is going to be um, probably the hardest one to get to. I'm still impressed by the people who found this one. So my point of reference is going to be standing in the center, and I'm going to use the two raised platforms where they are closest together as, say, due north, as the top. So if you're facing this direction, what you're going to do is make, you know, nice 120 degree turn over to this gazebo. Now from here, we're going to head out to a platform. And then we're going to make a jump that you'll probably think is crazy, but I promise it works. So you'll jump up here. Another curved platform. Be careful. Any of these platforms could disappear under your feet. And half the time they probably will. This one does have a tendency to do that. You'll get a little bit of a sound warning before that happens. Now what you're looking for is this platform. So make sure and take the path I showed you. This platform with this uh, statue with a lantern. Now this is going to seem like a leap of faith situation. But this is why you have the sword. Out there in the little fogginess is a pretty large rock structure. There is an egg on the back of it. So your best way to get there is try and get to the higher edge of this platform, get a running jump, and then sword swipe all the way over there. Basically, all you do is basically click the sword attack. It's the light attack. So for me, it's like my left bounce button. But whatever your light attack is, click that as many times as you can quickly to make sure you kind of basically fly. If you want to see what I'm talking about, you can creep up to the edge. And you'll just see a faint flicker of rocks out there. So again, try and get as high up as you can, run to the edge, get as high as you can on your jump, and then just start swinging. You cover brown ground pretty quickly, and even if you fall down here, this is totally fine. So, from here we'll start ascending this rock structure. And we're going to head around the back actually, so come back here is actually not a bad idea. And it's going to sit literally right here. So. The crazy, crazy egg is right there. If you guys are wondering about the eggs, they are eggs that you have to shoot with the Wish Ender Bow. 
and that comes from the Shattered Throne dungeon. So that's a quest in and of itself that takes place in there in the beginning and end, and then there's some stuff to do in the middle. Now, if you want to get back to the middle for the other egg and then the lore bones, we're going to go ahead and fly back, so it's the easiest way. Make sure you can give it a big check before you go flying across because it can be a little scary. But I think from here, you've usually got a pretty straight shot. Get some height. Watch for anything that's coming in. Look for those little purples. Make sure you're between them. And start flying back to the middle. Now, one thing you might want to do is if you're out here just to get this next one is land up here. It's a little easier to land up on top of this as opposed to jump from down below, but I'll show you guys you can do it. And there's Toland actually down there as well. You can see him off to the right. You don't have to be up here. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I'm just going over to the other side. So basically, if you were using the portal for me, but if I landed back from over there, I would be jumping to, again, due north at the top. One way or another, you want to get on top of this gazebo. So you saw me do it from there. I'm going to do it without the sword and anything else. So you guys can see an option. You don't need the sword anymore, so I'm just going to drop this bad boy in the middle. But still, what you want to do is get to the top of that little gazebo. However you do it, you're probably going to need some height on your jump. So whatever jump that you can find that's going to give you a decent amount of lift to it. If you've got any gear that actually is going to be stacked with mobility, that's not a bad thing to run right now as well either. If you've got anything with mobility, so there's some boots a little higher than that. I'm up at 51. That's probably reasonable. And then for jumps, I've got strafe, blink, and burst. I'm just going to go with burst to see if I can get up there. But again, trying to get up there, use this little thing here. And the, every class I know can get up here. It seems like it's tough. And even that one didn't quite get there. But it really can be done. Now, any other way to boost your mobility is not a bad thing. We're going to go and switch over to another subclass just to make sure I'm not missing a higher jump. There's going to be burst, a strong initial boost of speed. Um, balance glide, both moderate speed. But you're really just trying to get height out of your jump. Height does come from mobility, so the higher that stat, the better off you'll be. I'm at 11. It's not terrible. Could be a little higher, but that's probably what I'm going to get out of this one. So, go ahead and jump up top. Get a little running start to it. Jump at the end of that lip as little as you can, and you should eventually make it up here. Once you're up here, and if you have the Wish Ender Bow, what you're going to be doing is kind of hanging on this left edge and looking out to these rocks out here. When the lights flash, you'll see little rocks out there. You also see a very faint white glow, kind of right there. So I'm going to draw like the imaginary idea of an, a little mountain there. And then another one there. And then the crevice between those, there should be a little white glow. Now, I don't have anything to hit out here because I've already shot it. But you can technically hit it from here. You may get a whole bunch of shots that don't hit, get hit anything. So that's going to happen. But eventually, you will hit that egg back there. So just stay persistent with it. It took me about eight shots to hit it on my first try. But really, what you're looking for, look for that flash. Look for the little glowing rock in between the two peaks. And then you should be good. The final bit is the lore bones, again, using this as true north. And this is also the same gazebo I was jumping up on, on top of for the previous one, in case you were wondering. Um, this is true north. This is where you get the egg way out in the distance. But from here, we're going to turn 120, 120 degrees again to this right gazebo. And we're going to look for these little invisible platforms that let land below me. And these are going to be what you're going to do to get to the lore bones. So all the way down towards the bottom. Now, if you want Toland, and this is probably the first time you're coming in here, he tends to be on one of these lower platforms. If you need him, jump straight out to it. You'll hear him talk. Oh. He's apparently a little drunk right now. And then if you want to get back to the platform, just trust that the platform will be there. It's a pretty big one, and come on back. No worry of floating... Uh, floating rocks knocking you out down here. You're close to the center. Those aren't this close, so you should be okay on all your jumps down here. Almost messed my jump up there. And right when you get down here to this little rock tip right here, the lore bones should be down here at the bottom. So, that is everything for the Keep of Honed Edges. It was in the Harbinger Seclude. Again, on the map, you're going to go... This is not where I am, by the way. This is just like a re weird map location. But really, you go in the Davillion Mist all the way through Resilvia, all the way to the back through the portal... And then you're in the Keep of Honed Edges. So that is everything I can help you guys out with in here. Hopefully this is beneficial. So this is the longest one to find everything because it takes the sword. There's a whole lot involved to killing enemies and flying around. It's not just run to the end and shoot stuff. So hopefully this was beneficial to you guys. If you did find it helpful, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you got 
questions, thoughts, or otherwise, and hopefully there are other videos out there from me that can help you. The Tincture of Queen's Foil is going to be what helps you actually get into the Ascendant Realm for the Dreaming City and see some other stuff out in the world. And of course, if you're wondering anything about that, as I said, I've got a video. So, have a great one, enjoy your week in the world of Destiny, and enjoy. It's one of these things that is, um, <laughs> Warlock's always terrifying when I screw up a jump, but, um... Make sure you look where you're jumping. You might think there's going to be a platform somewhere, but don't always assume. And not all platforms are made equally. This one is definitely going to be a little on the annoying side because it's going to rotate on me and I'm going to fall. Well, don't do that, but at least it's early, so it's not that big of a deal. I didn't lose that much progress.